Hi folks, we're at LR Workshop, so I am about to reserve a Grenadier. It's that time. Uh, I'm in one of those early early bird kind of lists that I think a lot of people have got as well. I've seen you on the forums, at least on the Land Rover forums, people are signing up, so I thought I'd get in there. Don't know if I'm going to buy it in the end. Uh, I've got a mortgage kind of offer in progress at the moment, and if that expires and I need to get another one, then I need my finances to be in as good a position as possible and um, I don't know what I don't really know much about I've never bought a new car before so uh, um, I don't know what the finance is going to be on a £50,000 vehicle basically so um, don't really know what's going to happen but I kind of want to be involved I've checked down the back of the sofa I've raided the kids piggy banks you're eating cardboard for the next six months, kids, because daddy wants a new toy. At least I want to be part of the process, because never I was never part of uh, the new Defender, or the, sorry, the, the end of line 2016 Defenders, or I could never buy a new Defender um, when they were being made. I think this is quite an interesting thing. I at least want to be part of it to begin with, and um, let's see how things go. So I'm going to talk a bit more about kind of affording these vehicles um, afterwards, after I place the reservation. I'm going to talk a bit about test drive, prototype tour, and I'm also going to talk a bit about um, where I'm going to be going soon. Right. Place reservation. Okay, right. So reserve your grenadiers is up here. It's available for everyone else in 13 days unless you've got one of these codes. They are not transferable. I can I can book up to five vehicles, reserve up to five vehicles though. Funny old situation. Reserve your place, order when it's time to order. It says it's fully refundable. I have no idea how that would go through the process at the moment. But anyway, um I've got the link. Be first in line, fast tag. So basically I'm reserving the opportunity to put in a deposit. Right, let's go and get my code. Apply. Good. Continue. Right. Um Okay, so I'm just going to go through this process, put the microphone down, whiz through it a bit. Right, well, here we go. This is the time when I put the um, put the details in. So they want a phone number, presumably. They want to call you at the time when it comes available. They want to harass you on the phone. It's probably unfortunate. Right, card details. Oh, I'm totally going to blur this bit out. Reserve now. Oh. Here we go, now we get the terms and conditions. I wasn't able to read the terms and conditions before this, but here we go. You are, known, you are under no obligation to purchase a vehicle because of us. That's handy to know. So unfortunately, you can't sign up with this um, now and then sell it to someone. Want if because there's only two and a half thousand vehicles um, allocated for the UK, you can't sign up, get your thing now, and then try and sell it for like three grand in six months when all the all, all the build slots are gone. <laughs> That's basically what that means. Continue. Okay, it's done. There we go. Grenadier reserved. Your payment was successful. Join the conversation. Well, I think I am. I'm recording this. There is my reserved vehicle. So you get this reservation. That's where you can get your invoice and your refund. Uh, password. Saved configuration. Let's go and configure a grand ear, shall we? Right. Let's do a station wagon. Wow, it's quite good in full screen. This uh, is it, three D? No. Oh, can you rotate? Oh, it is. Maybe you can. Come on! What's going on? What's going on? Close. Okay. Uh, what am I going to do? Select. Configure the exterior. There's a big question straight away. Petrol or diesel? Hmm. Let's go diesel at the moment because I'm a traditionalist. Differential locks, front and rear. I wonder what they're going to cost. No idea. I'll leave them off for the moment. I kind of want the most basic bog standard poverty spec vehicle because because I just do. I don't want any. I think 
I don't know enough about the vehicle and you don't know what you want necessarily up front. Why should I pay a premium? Because actually, if there's going to be differential locks and things like that, I might um, be interested to see how you might buy that and then fit them yourself if you really wanted them uh, and go through that process rather than you know paying extra up front. Maybe you have to pay more later, but I'm interested to see what that process is like. That red they revealed last night is really nice. But I'm sure these are all going to cost a lot more. So uh, solid dark blue. I think the blue looks oh, it's not as good as the red. Metallic's going to cost you a bit more. Um, bu -bu 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 Let's go solid dark blue. At this stage, roof. Body colour or white? Ooh, I think white would be quite cool. It's very Land Rover-esque. Defender-esque. Uh, wheels. Tyres. Christ, 17-inch or 18-inch. Um, oh, BFGs. We'll go for BSGs there. 17 inch. Don't need alloys. More options. Access ladder, raise air intake, window. That's that bit on here on the window. Utility window panel. So you block that out. Does it change the configuration here? If you tick it. Can't tick it. I think it's got to be on the utility model. Exterior utility belt. I guess that's this bit here. Oh, yeah, look. It doesn't look like it's got. Oh, you can't click it. Ferrari windows. Uh, don't see what's going on there. Um, but essentially, you can leave them off. Don't know how these things are going to affect um, prices yet. I can't click anything. What's going on? The change. Oh, well, there you go. Man, this is quite slow. Maybe there's a ton of people on here at the moment. I'm recording this pretty much 12 hours after the. Uh, the first people are able to register, we go side runners. No, don't want those. They're just going to get damaged. And if it stops my kids climbing in the vehicle, that's fine. Uh, okay, that's the exterior. Interior, what have we got? Utility trim. Absolutely utility trim. I don't want leather in my vehicle. There we go. Oh, come on. Right. Utility trim. It looks, doesn't look that utility, but. Heavy duty utility flooring with drain valves or carpet. No, I don't want carpet. Who wants carpet? Leather, leather, leather. Oh, there's no non leather option. It's a shame. Uh, well, not that one, so I'll stick with that one then. Don't want that one. More options. Camp table, blimey. Switch panel, electrical preparation. Oh, that sounds like fun. What does that look like? Interior utility rails, central stowage, lockable box. Compass with altimeter. No, don't really want any of this. Uh, I'd be interested. Oh, this thing's quite cool. Mm, might have to add that just for a bit of um, playing around if it was all going to go ahead. Uh, right. Okay, good. Close. Is that it? Have I kind of heart it? Heart. Heart. Come on. Configuration saved. Come back later. There is my Grenadier. Glitzy, it's very modern. There we go. Look at that. That could potentially be my Grenadier. The thing about new cars is it's interesting now looking back at the the Defender, you know, this thing's like 50k and I'm entertaining it. And the Defender, you know, coming up to six years ago, or about six years ago, was you could have got one for about thirty thousand, somewhere in the thirty thousands up to forty thousand, and special editions were more than that, but that is still a lot of money as well. And that, it seemed like even more at the time. It kind of seems like a good deal now, doesn't it? Um, the thing for me was I've, when it comes to affording these things, um, if if we're looking at, I don't know, 30,000 pound vehicle, let's say, I guess you put a deposit down, five, six K, something like that, which you could save up over a bit of time if you needed a new vehicle. The contract might be five, 600 pounds a month, which, yeah, that that's quite a chunk. Depends on your income, obviously, but that could basically take all of your disposable income. And um, it's just something I never entertained. I just always assumed that it's too expensive. It's not. It's not for me in terms of buying a brand new car. I've seen people talk about how you know Defenders became so expensive, and they were you know people were unable to buy one as their like first vehicle, a brand new vehicle, and. It, I've never even considered a brand new vehicle as a 
as an option for me before because I've just assumed it's it's you know way out there really expensive I'm never gonna you know never gonna have the cash and now I'm a bit older I've had you know I've bought more expensive things and um you understand when you actually have money you, you understand what you can do with it and the, the possibility of owning something like this but really it comes down to to priorities I mean I'm going to assume that most people aren't super rich in which case in terms of your big purchases your lifestyle you know you're going to pro- you're going to have to prioritize something that kind of comes down to do you prioritize house or holidays or your car and you kind of got to pick one of those um and and to to try and maximize what you earn and your savings to 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 get the benefit of all of those um if you want nice holidays if you want a nice house if you want a nice car uh, yeah not everyone can afford that so i've never prioritized a vehicle i've always had my old 300 ti i've never prioritized even up i possibly could have afforded a new defender when they came out i mean the timing wasn't great because i've always valued at that time you know i've always valued through my career flexibility like getting a mortgage for me i got a mortgage nine years ago getting a mortgage was a big deal for me because up to that point i've been completely flexible you know i worked overseas traveling you know i was i was trying to do things in my career and be flexible the idea of getting locked down to a contract for say four years and having to pay for something um, such as a vehicle but then 25 years in a mortgage that was a big deal for me it's less of a deal now because I've been going through it and you kind of you understand how, how you how you deal with that that kind of having a contract and requiring a payment every month but it, the car was like another would have been another thing on top of that. Like I, I don't have mobile phone contracts for the same reason. I don't want to get tied into something um, long term. I've always kind of valued that flexibility. Now I've got kids, I realise I'm kind of a bit less flexible in what I can do and where I can move and, and stuff. So um, this is why I'm probably considering this for the first time. That the, the concept of buying a new car. Um, it's just about timing, right? Isn't it? Because if if you know if it, the if this was 2016 and I was in my situation right now, I probably would have bought a new Defender and just gone for it to have the experience. Because that's really what I guess I miss about the whole 2016 Defender or just any new Defender during the time when they were being built is that I was never never prioritised affording one because they were expensive. And I, as I said, I wanted that flexibility. Now I'm happy to give up a bit of flexibility and I could probably potentially afford it. Um, it's just it's just the old thing, you know, like life never matches up. Th- what you want to do, it's very hard to match up. I've got this theory that, that kind of like you, you, the things you're interested in, you're always interested in just after the golden age of whatever that is. Like I was just getting into Defenders when the 300D RS World Spec Defender stopped being produced industries I've worked in in my career I've come into it just on the downward slope and I've seen the kind of demise in those industries which is a real shame and there's a lot of yearning there for like oh my god if only I guess the one thing I have seen at its peak was probably the internet the internet was like the wild west you know from the late 90s onwards and I've been fully a part of that in my career and that was quite that was quite fun but in certainly in terms of my hobbies I wonder if it's that the golden age attracts a load of people into these things and then and then naturally it's beyond the it's just after the golden age who knows but certainly the grenadier it's like the beginning of a new chapter i kind of just want to be involved to begin with um just to kind of ride it out a little bit and see how it goes um even if i don't know if i can afford one yet i mean third vehicle i don't need one but that's the whole thing you know it's it's desirability and really you know the grenadier it's an icon for what it's not that's really its appeal it's really making a statement of what it's not yeah so anyway i'm gonna go on a test drive soon one of the 2b prototype tours um i finally got an invite i've had about three people contact me um over the last few months saying um i can't go here use mine which is incredibly generous of them um unfortunately you can't sign up we have to sign up with email that it was sent to it's kind of locked in to that and 
you know, trying to manage that where I'm signing up on their behalf, but you, they're using their email and having to forward stuff. It just wouldn't have worked very easily, I think. But I, I got my own invite in the end. So I'm going to go on the, the test drive soon, and I want to try and film as much as possible and then publish that video. I'm also going to be traveling overseas to somewhere the Grenadier has been quite recently, and I think they'll be producing a video about that quite soon. So that's quite exciting. I'm going to see what I can find out any kind of kind of in, insider information and um and maybe try and find some of the terrain that they've tackled i don't know yet it was great to see the uh the 3d parts diagrams in the the btg event last night the building the grenadier that was um a revelation that it's impressive it's utterly impressive and the fact they've got this step-by-step -step, you know animated guide about how to do stuff that's just brilliant I mean, it's all my dreams have come true. And basically, you know, everything they told me when I was at Goodwood a few months ago, uh, they weren't bullshit to me. It's real. Like, it's it's actually happening, um, which is fantastic to see. Um, we only know the price in the UK, the, you know, the two-door, which is, or sorry, the two-seat. I think it's five-door, but two-seat, and that's the commercial variant. £48,000, including VAT. This one you look in front, oh, it's probably going to be something like 53000 just because they can. Um Two and a half thousand units for the UK in the first year, rising to six thousand in 2026. So, even though it's going to be a, th they want to do thirty thousand vehicles a year. You know, the UK's got a fifth of that allocation. Um, the Defender was about thirty-five percent. Defenders went to the UK um, out of what was built, something like that. Except for the last year, the last year of 2016, or the last year that was 2016, the last model year. Uh, 5,000 of those 2016 models, about 5,000, went to the UK. They're in the UK. Um, so that's everything from about August 2015 onwards to January 2016. About 5,000 defenders went to the UK. Massively, the, the, U, the UK went hell to leather with buying defenders in that six-month period, five-month period. Um, so that's really interesting. So that's 5,000 defenders of people like, oh, it's the last one. I've got a bit of cash. Let's invest in it or let's buy one because it's a last opportunity. This reservation, there's only 2,500 potentially that's going to be available. What could happen here is those people with cash that have bought, new, bought the defender, the outgoing defender, the new defender wasn't quite for them. They've got the cash. They've got the money. They could sell their 2016 defender and buy this. It's 5,000 vehicles like that potentially that people could could move in on this two and a half thousand so i think these bill slots could disappear potentially even before you know it goes to the public in, in a couple of weeks time that's something to think about that'll be, that'll be interesting to see how quick all these um these slots um get taken up i wonder if they'll be doing any press releases about that but that's um yeah you don't know if people have been holding back or whether there's people that bought the new defender and like uh done that for a year oh the grenadier something new i'll trade my old defender in because they've got good prices at the moment because of the shortages of semiconductors and things people are selling the you know the trade the trade in price for new defenders is more than what people pay for them so there's people kind of scouring we buy any car on almost an hourly basis to to see if they can sell anyway there we go i have reserved a grenadier let me know in the comments if you've reserved a grenadier or if you're thinking about doing it and which flavor of grenadier you've gone for thanks for watching Bye for now.